What's up guys? This is indeed Silent Rob. I'm sure people will probably try to make it out to be some AI thing or some other fucking scam or some other thing related to the $5 website from 17 years ago. I don't know, but I really don't care <laughs> at this point. I was actually having a lot of fun uh, with that AI stuff. I was going to uh, have it go on a little bit longer, but uh, just uh, too much bitching and complaining here. Um, but I just did, I did want to make this video kind of clarify some things, let you guys know the... Uh, status of this channel and what's going to happen with it and yada 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 you know um basically what it comes down to is you know i, I haven't really been up to making anything <clears throat> recently um and for good reason and uh you know and i'll go ahead and say it right now like the silent rob that you guys know and love is done it's just done it's not who i am and it's been really hard for the better part of 17 years off and on to, you know, keep up this facade of this character that, um, you know, I've never really loved that much to begin with. I'm glad it's, and a lot of people have liked it. I've made some good videos, but a lot of my older stuff, I really can't even watch anymore, guys. You know, like, it's uh, it's not even who I am. A lot, you know, a lot of that stuff was just, it isn't even, wasn't even real my feelings on a lot of things. I was just a really good troll. I was really good at it. Uh, the Silent Rob character was essentially what I used um, on YouTube because I didn't think anybody would really want to hang out with just regular Rob. Or, you know, I'm, I'm just a dude, guys. You know, um, I'm just a dude with uh, extreme social anxiety and OCD and a myriad of other issues that um, you know I hide very well. What is this guy doing? Do you about to crash into me, Mofo? What the fuck? Anyways. And, um, you know, so, and I use comedy, and I have for my whole entire life, I use comedy as, like, uh, you know, a band-aid for it. Um, you know, when in reality, you know, I'm scared to death with half this shit. You know, I had to really force myself to even do uh, this YouTube stuff. And, um, you know, it was just kind of a cover, um, you know, kind of a mask I put on and pretend to be a, another person for a while, and it felt good. Um, but, you know, in reality, the normal me... Um, is the type of person that would go hang out with his friends and would count down the minutes when he could actually escape. Um, even with something he's looking for, I was looking forward to, you know, like I would look forward to going somewhere with my friends and halfway through it, you know, I would just, I just want to go. I just want to go. No real reason, you know, I just uh, get kind of panicky. I don't get out of there. Didn't know for a long time what was going on with me, but that's, that's basically what it is. But so I would just use comedy to, uh, you know, kind of gloss over it. And, uh, you know, what I didn't know at the time is that comedy, <laughs> doing that kind of stuff was probably the worst thing I could possibly do because um, people kind of expect a certain, you know, level of funny out of you, I guess you could say, everywhere you go. And if you just try to relax around your friends and just, you know, be normal or not talk for two or three minutes, oh, what's wrong? What's going on? Is there something wrong? And, you know, suddenly they don't want to hang out with you anymore because you're just not that uh, funny, wisecracking guy anymore, which you are. You just don't feel like doing it anymore. And, the, you know, the fact that I've been doing this shit for 17 years now, since 2007, is, is mind-boggling to me. You know, I was 20. I was 20 years old when, you know, when, I, when I started this page. And uh, I've almost been doing it for as long as I was alive at that point. And that's fucking crazy. And, um, so at this point in time, I'm going to do whatever I want to do with this page. And if you don't like it, you can get the fuck out of here. Um, those have stuck with me and want to, you know, continue the ride, have at it. Um, but, uh, comments telling me to do certain things, expecting certain things are, are not going to be even read at this point. Um, if I want to do AI stuff, I'm going to do stuff. If I want to make music, I'm going to do it. I deserve it. Um, you guys have thousands of videos and thousands of hours of Silent Rob, if that's what you want to watch. And, um, but I just don't want to do that anymore. I'm just not the same person. I never, you know, for the last few years, actually, it's been kind of hard, you know. <clears throat> when I do these streams, you know, I kind of have to be in the right mindset to get into this character and keep that level of energy up. Um, you know, especially when I was, uh, during that time battling... Uh, certain things that a lot of people did not know I was battling. Uh, I keep getting served uh, shit sandwiches on uh, dirty platters here recently. Um, even yesterday, uh, I was 
dude I used to work with, uh, that, you know, the job I'm at, not at anymore, I guess he got fired and you know, his mom found out and kicked him out. He was living with his mom, he was having problems with his wife. And, um, you know, he went and got his gun and blew his head off in his car. Yeah, we get it, dude, your car's loud. Yeah, so he, you know, killed himself and uh, found out about it through somebody else. And then um, this woman I know who's the mom of one of my friends, one of the coolest women I ever met, I used to talk to her about music all the time. Um, apparently died of breast cancer, didn't know anything about it. Um, yeah, you know, you start thinking back at things like, you know, I should have been there, should have went there, should have did this and that. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, it didn't really do much good. But, uh, you know, it's just one thing after another. Um, you know, but the reason I, I mean, these last few months have been insane. Totally insane. Eye-opening, and, um, you know, it just made me, it made me realize, like, do I, do I really want to pretend to do this crap that people expect out of me? I mean, most comedians don't have 17 years of material, mostly free, all free, uh, because some people have never given me a single fucking cent for anything I've done on here, and yet want to order me around all the time. Um, but, uh, free material. Um, I don't, I challenge you to find anybody else that's uh, done that and it's on here and you can enjoy it um i'm gonna make material of just me being me and if you don't want to watch it you can eat a fucking rock hard dick okay because i'm gonna do whatever i want okay if i want to do ai stuff for the rest of eternity it's what i'm gonna do because uh, it's really interesting to me right now and that's what i like to do so you know I remember when I used to stream, people would get on my fucking nuts about playing games that I would want to play. Oh, you're playing this again. Oh, blah, 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 blah. I was like, well, well, you haven't, you, you don't, you donated a dollar in 2007. Okay. So I guess you got the right to order me around. Okay. So, you know, people like to do that kind of stuff. Um, you know, so, but yeah, you know, I mean, you know, during those streams, you know, if you really, if you guys really, uh, do some Sherlock Holmes detective work on that stuff. You can kind of see where, you know, I start to falter a little bit. Um, basically, uh, I was never, I've never been a big drug guy, dude. Uh, the only thing I've really ever done is uh, is weed and, you know, occasional this and that and the other thing. And uh, that was that was until, uh, you know, I had somebody move in with me and um, that all changed. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of background about me. I have... Uh, daily fucking pain that I deal with at one of my jobs uh, that I ha used to have. I ha uh, ha They have these things called walkies, which are like forklifts that you control by hand with a handle. And uh, I had all my steel toe boots, everything I was supposed to do, and the thing malfunctioned and ran over my foot, uh, crushing the steel toe plate into my big toe, um, crippling my big toe permanently. And so my big toe is completely straight like this all the time. I cannot bend it at all. And I had, to, you know, when I was talking about that stuff, I had to have a toe fusion and all this other stuff. It does not bend. It gives me constant pain. Um, so, you know, I was prescribed uh, Tramadol for that. And it helped quite a bit. Um, actually, the big, best thing about Tramadol is you can have sex forever. You just, as a matter of fact, it's to a fault. I would, I would make girls sick and tired of it after a while. You just never bust a nut on that shit. So it was pretty nice. Um, when I stopped, uh, I was quite surprised, like, oh shit, I need to relearn how to have sex more than for more than five seconds now, because damn, so that shit is crazy, but uh, had someone move in for a while with me, and uh, suddenly my pills start coming up missing, you know, I confront them about it, uh, they're like, oh, sorry, 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 I will get you a uh, Percocet um, to make up for it, you know, and uh, I, I, you know, I wasn't really interested in that shit, but uh, he swore up and down that, you know, it was good times um but you know the weird thing is he told me that you're you you do not want to take it orally you want to like snort like little lines of it and um i thought that was weird he's like they're really strong and i was like thinking eh, i think i've had a percocet before or something man this is you know whatever but i did what he said and i did a little line of it uh, they call them blues on the street i'm sure you guys know about them don't ever do them and i'll get into that in a minute but uh this that was my downfall as soon as I did that first one, that was it. It was over. It was over. 
And uh, I was so over, in fact, that I did that line and I decided to call off of work for the rest of the day. Uh, so I could, because uh, I had like two of them, two or three of them. So I could uh, continue to do them for the rest of the day. Should have indicated uh, <laughs> that I like that shit a little bit too much. So um, that continued for a little bit. If you guys go back and watch like the Elden Ring stream, you'll notice when I go to back, go to the bathroom, when I'm going to the bathroom all the time, oh, has this guy got a prostate issue? No, I'm, just, I'm doing lines in the other room. Um, I had to, so, you know, I go and do them, come back and act like nothing was wrong, you know, and everything else. Um, that particular person, you know, got my wife kind of dabbling in it a little bit too, which I wasn't thrilled about. And, um, okay, can this guy not play loud music? Thank you. Fucking douchebag. Anyways, um, so I did those off and on. As a matter of fact, that one argument I was having on the phone with that guy about putting money in a mailbox. You know, I'm sure some people could, you know, pinpoint this stuff and try to put it, piece it together. Um, but nobody really ever did. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, in movies and stuff, when people kind of think something's going on, they ask you about it. No, nobody was there. Nobody asked me anything. Um, you know, even when the signs were there, when, you know, I'm asking people for money randomly. And, uh, you know what those people do? They block me. Like uh, Asa and David, um, yeah, they just didn't ask what was going on with me or anything. Instead, they uh, <clears throat> said some nasty shit in a stream and beat their chest and tried to get some clout and then blocked me for a couple years. And then when they actually found out that I was actually extremely sick, and then they wanted to unblock me and act like nothing happened. No, you, you blocked me. I, have, I know what happened. But regardless, and uh, but I got off of those. And, you know, I, let me tell you something about myself. I've never been the type of person to get addicted to anything. I'm the type of person that can smoke cigarettes all year. When when it gets cold outside, I do not smoke anymore. I do not get urges of the, for smoking. I don't do it. Any other drug that I've tried, I don't. I'm not. I don't get urges to do it. You know. So you know, it builds this like Superman thing in your brain, thinking that you can just do whatever you want and uh, everything else. I met my kryptonite. Um, I stopped the blues. I stopped the blues. Um, not even so much that, um, uh, for my health, uh, health reasons, I did it because it was just expensive. Uh, you guys would not believe the amount of money I was spending on this nonsense. And the guy I was getting it from was shady and I didn't want to deal with it anymore. I was going to get my ass shot. So I stopped and, um, I thought I was out of the woods. Uh, that's until, uh, you know, I wouldn't even say a friend, but an acquaintance of my wife's came over you know, with this, uh, with this finny stuff, uh, fentanyl to the rest of the world. Um, you know, you might want to, you, you say to yourself, like, uh, how do you, how do you even do something so stupid? You know what I mean? Like, how does that, how does that happen? And, uh, you know, that would disregard and say that, you know, everybody that's ever done that horrible, horrible drug is just a fucking complete retard. And that's just not the case. Cause let me tell you, um, literally it's, <laughs> All you got to do is basically look at this shit and you're higher than you've ever been in your entire life and you might not survive it. Um, I, literally, this person came in and basically put like this much, like a microscopic amount up to my nose and it was over. It was over. Uh, the pl <laughs> the uh, roller coaster car has derailed. Okay. The wheels came off. I was going down the hill. There was no stopping me. Um, it was bad. It was really bad. And, uh, you know... It's, uh, it's one of those things where you're, you know, you look at yourself in the mirror and you're just like, I, I'm a piece of shit now. You know, like, you know, there's rock bottom and I'm starting to pickaxe through the ground here. And, um, you know, that, that particular person got my uh, wife hooked on it too, which I wasn't at all happy about. You know, I don't give a fuck about myself, but, uh, I didn't want anything to happen to her. And, uh. Well, you know, that person got her uh, us on it because she has an acquaintance that sold it. So I'm sure there's some kickback with that. In fact, I'm sure I'm positive there was. So, uh, yeah, so that was a hopeless situation. And, um, <clears throat> and, you know, fentanyl is a monster. I mean, however you think you know, whatever you think you know about drugs and whatever you think, whatever you've done, it will never, ever 
prepare you for what this is. Okay, this is horrendous. The worst thing that's ever happened to me in my life. And uh, if there's anything you can take from anything I've ever said to you guys, don't, don't do it. I can't even hardly even say it. It's so bad. And uh, I mean, uh, and when I when I say that you got you get higher than you ever been, it's true. For like the first week, and then you just have to do it so you don't get horrendously, debilitatingly ill. And because um, you know, if you stop for about six hours, you will. And so it interrupts your relationships. It, it interrupts your your job. Interrupts everything. You have to do it. You know, so you're doing it all the, all the time. You're not thinking about anything else. You're thinking about when you have to buy these pills. Or at that point, it wasn't pills. It was just, just the powder that's, of that stuff. And uh, when you have to buy it, you have to get it. God fucking help you if the person has ran out and can't get it for you. Or there's some kind of delay. And you got to ration that shit out. It's crazy. And, um, you know, so, uh, you know, the tipping point... At that at that point was uh, and I got super sick off of it, and it was the weirdest thing. I wouldn't, I won't even know if I would even say it was an overdose. It was weird. Um, I bought some from a different guy that I didn't usually buy some from, and it didn't smell right, and I threw it away. Um, but uh, I think some got on the table or something. I'm not quite sure, but I didn't feel right, and I felt bad. And uh, my uh, friend had dropped off this Narcan stuff just in case, because. Uh, you know, that particular person got us on the stuff, so, you know, why not, I guess, pretend like you're going to help us with that. Um, so I used that on me, and uh, it was expired. It was, like, massively, massively expired, and I start going into, like, these crazy convulsions, and uh, it, was, it was bad. If you can imagine, like, going into convulsions, but you're completely... You, convulsions, and then you're fine. Convulsions, and then you're fine, and then you, you, you're actually conscious through it, and you can kind of talk. It wasn't good. I ended up in the hospital bad okay um got out of the hospital s still did not deter me from uh doing it um that's how vicious the shit is okay um you know same thing that that person that had gotten on he completely into it too wasn't happy and um the ultimate tipping point was you know it's just a normal time normal day and um i'm sitting on the couch and uh you know, we're just kind of vibing out, and all of a sudden, you know, Ani, Ani lets off this really deep, guttural, like, exhale. You know, and um, I knew what was, I knew what was happening immediately, and uh, she was overdosing right in front of me, and I don't even know how it happened. I don't, I didn't give her any, I don't even know what the fuck even happened. To this day, I have no idea. Um, so at this point, you know, you're the only person that can save the most important person that's in your life and you have to do it. <laughs> and if you fuck up, it's over. Um, and it, don and you know, it, it dawns on you I mean, and, and does, you know, you're high as fuck and you better dial the number, right? You better have charge on your phone. You better, you know, do everything you need to do, get the ambulance there. It was the worst thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. And, uh, I'm pretty sure it gave me PTSD. Uh, you know, it's uh, something I'm <laughs> currently having to deal with. Um, but uh, it's one of those things that, you know, they don't really show you in the movies what or anything else as to, like, what that's really like when you see somebody, like, overdosing and stuff. It's not like it is in, in Pulp Fiction. It's, it's, it's gnarly. Um, and the, the person looks like a corpse, and they look like a corpse very fast in front of your face and then they do it with their eyes open looking right at you but they're they don't they're unresponsive it's bad okay um and i saved her and everything's fine you know and um but it's one of those things where every time i close my eyes for the past i'm, I'm okay now but for the after it happened for like two months afterwards i was replaying it in my mind as to what if i was asleep what if i went to the store what if i went to the bathroom what if i did this 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 you know, um, that was the turning point as to when I was like, I can't do this anymore. And getting off of it is unbelievable. 
is the worst, hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, I've never experienced withdrawal symptoms. I have a little bit, um, but uh, not like this. This was unbelievable. Um, I was sicker than I've ever been in my entire life. And I literally had to break my phone. Um, you know, the, the person I got the stuff off of was, of course, blowing me up. Did not want me to stop. He knows what I was doing. Um, I had to break my phone. I had to lock myself in a room. Puking my guts up. Puking blood. Bad. Bad. You're not sleeping. I didn't sleep for like two weeks. I don't, it was, I was delirious. It was bad. Um, you know, luckily I had quit my job before this. Because I would have quit my, I would have lost my job anyways. Um, or continue to do it so I can continue to go to work. I quit for the way, that, way they were treating my wife. But anyways, um, I did it. I got off of it. It was, ugh, man, it was vicious. Let me tell you. It's, uh, I can see why people never, never stop. And, um, you know, because stopping almost, doing it will kill you. And stopping will kill you. I've I had to go to the hospital three times because uh, I was so dehydrated from puking and shitting and shitting on top of the puke and shitting on and puking on top of the shit. Uh, I was bad, and um, you know, going through all that and uh, being sober is is uh, you know I've been sober in so long. You know, I was uh, on tramadols for a long time, and those just kind of numb you and make you not give a fuck. And you know, after that, all the myriad drugs that I took. Uh, so it's kind of a shock to the system being like, oh yeah, I'm in extreme pain all the time. Um, but, uh, I have, I have learned to, uh, really be okay. You know, like, uh, I thought, you know, at first it was really bad. Um, but your body can get used to anything and so can your mind. And, you know, I've just been kind of dealing with a lot of guilt, I guess, um, as to how I could possibly waste as much money as I did on that shit and um, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I think what really, really got to me is the fact that, you know, uh, just uh, no, nobody noticed, dude. You know, nobody cared. Um, I can't possibly believe anybody could possibly look at some of those videos I did later on and not realize. Um, but nobody cared. And uh, that's what kills me. And, um,. You know, you tell people, oh, I had no idea. I'm like, I don't know how. I mean, I, I went, went to your house. I'm going to the bathroom every 30 seconds. Um, you didn't freaking, you know, say anything. I mean, <laughs> you know, when you're always there for everybody all the time, um, but they're never there for you, it starts to uh, weigh on you. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah. And that's not even everything. And I'm not even going to even talk about some other stuff at this point. But. That's why I haven't been making videos, okay? Um, it's it's not really been a priority, you know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, if you guys want to see sober, boring Rob, then, you know, I can give you that. Um, Ani especially wants to stream. She misses it, and I'll probably do it for her. Um, I think one of the other problems is I'm just not into video games lately, dude. Uh... I'm just, I can't do it. I've tried many times. I can't focus. I've got too many things going on in my mind. And, um, but I can try. Um, I am not going to deal with any nonsense. I'm not. I don't have to. I'm almost 40 years old. Okay. Um, I do not care or want to hear anything about a lot of the 17 year old bullshit anymore. Okay. I don't. Um, Irate Gamer, all this stuff you know, occasional joke here and there. I don't want to hear it. Um, I just don't. I am not y'all's babysitter. I am not required to do anything for anybody at any point. I'm a grown-ass man. This is my page. And uh, if you don't like it, you can see ya. You know what I mean? Like, I'm telling you. Uh, some of these people, I've never, I don't even recognize their screen names. They try to come out of the woodwork. And um, they try to tell me what to do all the time. And it's not the way it works. But uh, continue to watching, and uh, Ani's calling me right now, so I gotta go answer that. But uh, there will be more stuff to come. Love you guys. Out.